So now we're going to start on our little hike, our one hour hike to the um, volcano. So here we are in a lava field in Iceland, and it's the only place in the world where you can go inside a volcano. And there's more people that have been into space than have been into a volcano. But we're going 120 meters down into a um, magma um, chamber. And it's where, when the volcano was in operation, a fissure opened up downhill from the volcano and the lava drained out. And so there's a huge chamber, a hole, an open space inside the earth. Sometime in the next 100, 200 years maybe? But people ask them, is there any chance of it erupting all the way down there? It doesn't work like that. It starts shaking. The earth starts shaking quite a long time before anything like that happens. So Okay, just to give you a look around here, that's where we started hiking from, the ski resort, right over there. So Josh has some reindeer moss in his hand here, and uh, tell the story behind it. So they call it reindeer moss because it looks like reindeer antlers, if you can see. Mm -hmm. um, and the outlaws used to eat this uh, when they're hiding out in the caves or whatnot, and they make all kinds of ointments and... And, uh, and different medicines and different so medicines from this. Uh -huh. So we're gonna give it a try, and I'll tell you what I think. Okay. Kind of tastes like nothing. Mm -hmm. it's chewy has a nice texture. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And that's it. Yeah. So we're continuing to hike here across the lava field, and this tour we're on is very unique in that this is the first time they've offered it, and it's only this summer for a few weeks. And then they're going to assess wh whether they will keep continuing on with this. They will study the impact that this tour has on the environment and on the volcano, whether to continue on. It's been known for a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually find this on a map of Iceland's cave. It literally filters through the rock mm. down oh, to nice. the water, you know, down to the water level, and then the water level uh, runs down to the wells. We drink from Reykjavik, so this is one of the reasons why we have such pure water here. So we're probably about halfway across the lava field now to the volcano and I guess Discovery Channel National Geographic did a um, documentary on this volcano and but this is the first summer it's been open to the public now. So these can grow up to I think the biggest ones we had in the northeast and those were actually quite catastrophic for, in our history but they happened I think 12, 13, 1400 something and they were um, they opened up, it's literally a wall of lava that opens up in front of you. And these can go up to 20, 25 kilometers long in the longest stints they have. And, uh, you know, in that big one in the northeast, it actually devastated the whole community there and, and the whole, that whole part of the country. So we're almost there, and if you can look in the distance, you can see the ski resort where we started out behind Josh and Mark here. So we've now reached, uh, I guess you'd call this base camp and they sell water and probably things to eat and this is where we'll go down into the volcano crater from right here. Mark and Josh are getting their gear on, their mountain gear and then there's also helmets that they're going to put on in a minute. So just um, down a bit from where the base camp is there's this lava I don't know you call it a crater looks like it's broken open some time ago and that's really the inside of it it's, uh, and there's another one over here that's probably open in the inside. And this uh, shows you, again, there's where base camp is there. And you can see the people standing up there. That's where the lift is that takes people down 120 meters into the volcano. Once again, this is the top of a lava tube probably here. Look at the way that the lava sort of outflowed many, well, I guess this is about 4,000 years ago. And from here you can see this very clearly, this peak here. Standing here now, and we will walk up to the top. And there is a crane beam, a gitter beam, steel beam, and a skyscraper uh, cable lift that will take you 120 meters down. Okay, there's the generators that power the little house, and there's Reykjavik over there. And we're going to actually walk up this path to the top of the uh, crater. 
So we're just on top of the volcano here looking over towards Reykjavik and uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Our tour guide. And there is the lift over there that's going to take us down into the volcano. This is the uh, lift that we're going to take down into the volcano. Push off any rocks down and all cameras touch to your head or to your wrist. Mm -hmm. Please don't use the phone because you might drop it on the heads of those who are staying under. Okay. Mark's just getting off the lift at the bottom here. We move out of this circle because things could fall right here. Wow, look at the water falling in. So this is the cave and there's the hole at the top that we came down through. And there's an ice cream shop down there. <laughs> there's an ice cream shop down there. <clears throat> There's a lift that we came down on. Come outside. Okay. Okay, so those people are going to head up yes. in a minute when they get all hooked up. Yeah. Okay, so you can physically see, he probably told you a lot of this on the way down as well, but you can physically see how the fissure opened up here on either side. The cracks in the, in the rock, which is how it split up open. This whole area filled this up with the rock, and eventually when the pressure built enough, it burst out up top. But, you know, it probably... You know, made the it didn't go all the way, but it built up little by little, built up the of the tube itself. And uh, like I said before, I was telling you guys in the bus. This is on this side. You can see it's a little bit wider on this side, and this is probably the most likely theory on why this is so stood up still. Is because it opened up a bit wider on this side and literally ran downhill for a couple of kilometers and started oh. coming up in a different place. <coughs> So, and while this is happening, this takes hours, not days or weeks, and while this is happening, it literally bakes the key, cave from the inside out. The heat in here would have been about 2,000, 2,500 degrees centigrade. And the heat bakes the cave from the inside out, which gives us these amazing colors down here. And uh, the black spot is most likely a gas explosion. So gas gets trapped inside the rock as it cools down, and little by little the pressure builds until it eventually explodes into the cave itself. And uh, this happens after it has cooled down, and what this, this fourth has this yellowish color to it. It's a bit more black. And you can see these tiny black spots in the ceiling where the stones have fallen off. But if you're going down this side, use the wall. Travel by the wall. That's the safest way, and it's, it's the easiest and safest way here. Mm -hmm. If you're going down this side, there's actually a platform. You can go quite deep down there, mm -hmm. and it's quite amazing because there's some beautiful pictures down there. If you're going this side. Use the middle. Travel really close to the light here. So that's Mark way down the right corner there. He's checking out that hole over there. And just looking up, you can see the colors in the rock. And that red is from actual rust from the iron. And as I look around here, people are just kind of hey, roaming around. And they have the cave all lit up. There's the lift coming down with another group of people from the top. But this is 120 meters down. And once again, this was full of lava at one time. And then there was a fissure somewhere here that actually allowed the lava to drain downhill. And so it was all emptied out. And um, all this rock was kind of baked here. And then the top crust of it all fell down. So the hole is, the cave is still here today, some 4,000 years later. So we're kind of at we're at the very bottom of the uh, magma chamber here. There's Mark and Josh. That's just my light from my miner's helmet. They were looking down that hole there where I'm shining my light. And once again, there's the main cave. And here comes the car down to get the group that went down before us. There's our guide there. So this is an actual crater that we went down inside. What do you think, Josh? Pretty neat, eh? Yeah. Do it. Yeah. And there he goes back down now to get the last group of people. Just showing you around. Could you imagine? Yeah, people are having a picnic right across this thing. When there was snow and they didn't fall through. So that's basically it. And we're all finished now as far as going in the volcano. We've come out and then we're going to have some hot soup up here and then uh, do the hike back.